Did you know that you can run hacking face models using JavaScript directly in your browser? So without using any kind of servers and all of that using the APIs, which are very similar to the APIs of the Python library of hacking face. And this isn't even that new. And before I am jumping into the latest features of transformers.js, if this is the first time you are seeing this library, let me show you a couple of examples what we could have done already. So here in the library and the link in the description, um, you can find the folder with examples where the creators of the library provided a lot of different examples how to use uh, models from hacking face together with uh, JavaScript, Node.js, React, and all other things. So uh, you can run them. That's what I have done. And here, just to show you a couple of examples, for example, with a simple uh, HTML page and a bit of JavaScript, we could create a image detector. So here we are using the model, the model, where is the model? Uh, the model, which is called uh, Detro ResNet 50. And this is the model which was actually specifically converted for using a JavaScript. You can see the corresponding original model over here as well it comes from Facebook. We are going to talk about converting the Python variants of the models into JavaScript in just a bit. But for now, let's focus on this example. So we are using this model uh, to detect uh, stuff in the images. So for example, I will upload uh, this image from my past conference and the model analyzed and detected different objects. A lot of people, um, some background, uh, some cups here and there, TV, uh, which is not exactly TV, but still, I think it's good enough. Uh, another example, which we can look at, for example, removing this one. I really like removing the background from the image. Here we are using another model, um, this one. This model allows us to remove the background of the image and I can upload, uh, for example, some kind of an image. Let me do this one with lots of very delicious fruits from Jakarta and it worked. Background is removed. We also can use directly in Node.js. For example, here we are creating a pipeline to use the sentiment analysis features and uh, we can run this and it will detect that the message here is most probably negative. Now, admittedly, this is already super cool, but in the latest release of transformers.js, they added more features and the highlights include the web GPU support. So if you're running a model in the browser and your browser supports web GPU, then the performance of that model will be significantly faster comparing to WebGL or whatever we had in the past. Also, to improve the performance even more, this library, they introduce some new quantization formats so that we can kind of load uh, smaller models. You can imagine that the computational resources in the browsers comparing to the dedicated servers is still somewhat lacking, even though we don't complain, we are happy from what we get, but still um, running a smaller model, so like kind of optimizing that model for the browser makes a lot of sense. So before we move to the next features, let's go and look at an example of running a model using web GPU. Here we have one of those examples with the chat. So what I did, I installed the uh, dependencies and now we can run it in uh, the browser. And this relies on the model uh, on this V3 Mini 4K Instruct model, which is a smaller size of a transformer model, ideal for running it in the browser. With that smaller size, you still have to download around two gigabytes of data. So here we will load the model first. Actually, I added some uh, console logs so that we can see what is happening. So we are loading the model. Uh, it keeps in the cache for some time, but I was running it yesterday and right now I see that the cache is gone. So we still have to download those two gigabytes of memory and I just run out of my coffee. I'll be back while we load this. Loaded and ready. Time to ask it very sophisticated questions. Okay, so tomato is a fruit. 
That brings me to the next question. If a tomato is a fruit, does it make ketchup a smoothie? Oh yeah, I don't think it has a sense of humor. What's 256 divided by 8? Mm, takes a long time to figure out. 32. I think it's a better at math than I am. No sense of humor, but good skills at math. It's totally the opposite of what I can do. Uh, so, let's look at the code for all of this. And in the code, we do have a React application over here. Uh, there are some React JS logic, uh, which you might be familiar with or not. Uh, we do check here in the code, or let's say the person who wrote this example, they check if it's WebGPU available or not. Uh, but the main logic actually happens in the worker.js file. And that's where I wanted to show you a couple of things around. So first thing first, we load the module itself. And here we are checking if the GPU which we are using, the web GPU which we are using, has a support for FP16. This is apparently some kind of uh, support for shader F16, which makes things even faster. And if we do have that support, then we are using the variation of the model uh, which relies on FP16. Otherwise, we are using the default uh, variant of that model. We are loading the tokenizer. We are loading the model over here. Here we can actually see that usage for D-type Q4. This is the one I was showing you somewhere over here. Here it is. Uh, the new quantization formats, D-types. And here we have a variety of them. Either we go with full precision, which is FP32, uh, or we are going with uh, smaller ones uh, with less precision. And this particular one, which we are loading, is a 4-bit. Loading of the model and other actions happen when they are triggered from the main thread. Uh, over here from the application, here we are sending and telling the worker uh, that we need to generate or let's see what else uh, here we have. So, or we load the model and this is how we connect the UI. Um, we connect the UI with the logic from the worker. We reset the conversation, for example. Uh, and do all those things. And here we uh, listen to those events and then react if we are told to load the model, uh, we are loading the model. Um, if we are told to generate the data, we generate the data or interrupt or reset. So let's look at the generate method over here. So we receive the message from the UI, the message from the user. Uh, then what we do, we apply the chat template and then we use that information from the tokenizer, the inputs, together with the callback. Uh, and we send it all into the model. And we ask the model to generate the data, data based on the input, based on the max new tokens. Um, and uh, providing also the streamer, the stopping criteria. I'm not sure what is stopping criteria here. Where do we... I guess this is something which comes from us. <laughs> so that we can interrupt it in the process. And with that, we decode the output text and then we can bring it back to the UI. And here I'm also outputting it. So if we look at the console logs over here, we will enter in the generate mode, uh, providing the message is tomato is a fruit or a, a vegetable. Then we will get in this answer from the model. It's a bit collapsed here, but you can see that actually it's about the botanical classification. And this is exactly what it was answering us in the response. So this is really, really cool. And I have been waiting for a while till JavaScript starts catching up with Python when it comes to machine learning and running the models. Admittedly, it's still more limited uh, comparing to the possibilities which we have with Python running models using the server-side logic. However, there is a wide support right now which uh, Transformers.js allows us 
So there are a number of um, different types of models, such as uh, BART, BART. Uh, you can find all the list of 120 something uh, types of architectures which they support. And to convert a model which is designed to be used by Python library, but you want to make it compatible with the transformers.js, they offer a script which you can use. And there are already over a thousand of pre-converted models. Uh, let's see the list over here. So there is a lot of different models uh, uh, which you can use. They have this label. So for example, if I go here, you will see this label transformers.js. This is what you have to look for if you are searching for the uh, models which uh, you will be able to run with transformers.js or you convert your own one using the script and instructions which they have. Also, the way how they allow that web GPU support uh, comes from the collaboration with ONX Runtime Web and using this particular library, which apparently comes from Microsoft. So yes, all in all, this is a huge win for JavaScript community. And I'm really grateful for the creators of Transformers.js library. Uh, because this means that I will be able to use more uh, machine learning capabilities with JavaScript and not really going all the time to Python side, which doesn't make it a dark side. It's just a Python side, right? <laughs>